Hello students, in this session we will discuss a circuit diagram, Ohm's law, introduction of the resistance and some numericals related to Ohm's law. So let us begin. So in previous section we draw some symbol of the circuit diagram. So today we are going to draw a complete circuit diagram and understand meaning of every symbol once again. So we are going to draw a circuit diagram by using a bulb, a resistor, an ammeter, voltmeter, switch and cell to maintain the potential difference between the terminals. This is the symbol of cell in which larger bar shows the positive terminal and the smaller bar shows negative terminal. Being connected with a switch and it goes on. It has a resistor, a bulb, sorry, a bulb, then again a resistor and an emitter to measure the current and as we do know that emitter is always connected in series and back again to the cell if I wish to calculate the potential difference between these two points that is the end points of the resistor I should connect voltmeter parallel to the resistor that is between the terminals of the end point of the resistance so this is my key this is bulb this is resistance this is an emitter which measures electric current voltmeter which measures the potential difference between these two points i am naming it by point p and point q the voltmeter can read the potential difference between the point P and Q. This is a cell and this is key in off position. If I put a dot sign over here, this symbol will be used for the key or switch in on position. Okay. So this was all about the circuit diagrams. As we discussed in previous class that current is Q by T. And work done per unit charge I defined it to be potential difference so in this equation I have the relationship between I and Q and here Q and V so obviously we can relate I and V from these two equations but we don't have any direct relationship the direct relationship between these two terms is given by Ohm's law. This topic is very very much important for exam point of view, for concept point of view and based on this topic only we will be solving a lot of numerical problems and those numerical problems are also very much important from exam point of view. So before considering Ohm's law, we should consider a situation. Consider a conductor. It can be a metallic wire or any piece of conductor you can consider. Suppose that I have applied some potential difference across its terminals such that it can be done by several of ways by applying a cell or a battery whatever it is so the potential difference between the terminals of the conductor is V I am considering potential difference to be V and due to this the current current flowing in the circuit is I the direction of current is always taken from positive to 
negative so this is the direction of current so i am reconsidering the situation i have considered a conductor in which the potential difference between its terminals is v and i is the current flowing through the conductor then George Simon now stated that at a given condition and that condition was constant temperature we will discuss about this also but for now let us assume it only to be a fixed condition or a definite condition at a given condition the current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference so I, I should write its statement at given condition the current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied on the ends of the conductor so mathematically I can say if my potential difference is V and current is capital I then I can say according to this statement that current is directly proportional to potential difference or I can say V is directly proportional to I which will imply that V if I remove this proportionality sign and put an equality sign over there then I must multiply some constant V is equals to I times R where R is proportionality constant so this is the total statement of Ohm's law let us revise it once more a very quick revision if V is the potential difference across the ends of the conductor and I is the flowing current through the conductor then the amount of current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across the ends of the conductor so I can write I is directly proportional to V by the statement or we can imply it V is directly proportional to I and V is equals to IR where R is proportionality constant. Okay, so from this definition we have got V is equals to IR, R is constant and is called as resistance this R is called as resistance so the resistance the word root of resistance and its meaning is to resist what does it resist it resists the flow of current the flow of charges so the basic property of resistance is to resist the flow of charges. Resistance resist flow of charges or electric current both has the same meaning. So we must keep in mind that conductors have low resistance. bad conductors have high resistance okay 
now this will be your assignment to find out you can go through the books to find out the range of resistance for the conductors the range of resistance for the bad conductors or insulators you can use different materials you can find it out this is your assignment okay so the equation the ohms this will be your assignment okay from ohms law i can write v is equals to ir so i will be equal to v divided by r another important equation or using this equation i can write i is r is equals to v by i using this i can say si unit of the resistance should be for potential difference we are using volt by si unit of current is ampere so si unit of resistance should be volt per ampere or it is also called as ohm itself and it is denoted by a greek letter omega upper omega okay you, you can write like this omega you just have to re read it like ohm okay this letter name of this letter is omega but we should read it ohm like in case of ampere we are writing capital a but what we are reading ampere so this is capital omega but we have to read it ohm okay so as a unit of resistance we have now it is ohm now we are doing exactly same thing what we did for the 1 ampere 1 volt and now we are going to define 1 ohm that is unit resistance now since as we do know from ohms law v is equals to i times r i can write r is equals to v divided by i now if my v is 1 volt and i is 1 ampere if i put the value v is equals to 1 and i is equals to 1 it will be the value of 1 ohm so then i can write the resistance is my 1 ohm so the definition of 1 ohm i am going to rewrite exactly same thing but in words i can write if the conductor is applied between potential difference of 1 volt and the current flowing through the conductor is 1 ampere then it has 1 ohm resistance then it has 1 ohm resistance so this was all about the resistance the introduction of resistance obviously but uh, we must keep in mind that this ohms law whatever we have emphasized over here it is on the fact that we are considering at a given condition it means we are not allowing the fluctuating conditions such as the temperature it must be maintained temperature should be constant otherwise this resistance may or may not be constant one thing we must know that this resistance is temperature dependent so obviously we can say that r is constant 
but at a fixed temperature not at every condition we must know that resistance is constant at constant temperature the first thing second thing resistance is constant for a given conductor only suppose that i have here two pencils one is looking like this and another one is looking like this both are made up of wood but on calculations we may get there is different value of resistance moreover if i will use a longer marker and a shorter marker suppose that they are conductor actually these are not conductor but we are supposing it that let these things be conductor then these two bodies will have different resistance depending upon their length their area of cross section the material by which they are made up of etc etc so resistance is constant but for a given conductor and at constant temperature only not for the every condition we cannot say that resistance is a constant for every uh, conditions so we must know it the third thing in more general resistance increases with increase in temperature resistance increases with increase in temperature what does it mean if i will heat up the material then its resistance will be increased so this is not true for every condition this is true only for the certain uh, i can say the conductors only metallic conductors only but this statement does not uh, is not valid in the case of molten conductors like electrolytic solutions 